What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie gaming, it is kind of a serendipitous day. I don't know why I used a big word right there. I was just trying to say it's a pretty happy day, but then serendipitous came out. I don't, I don't even know if does that count as a big word. It's got more syllables than the words that I normally use, alright? So it's a little outside the ordinary for me. I usually try to keep it small. Keep it simple. I can't have my brain cells hurting too much. I get like this mild headache whenever I do anything intelligent. And so like, I try to keep that from happening at all costs. My name is Splattercat, welcome to Rise to Ruins. The game is out in 1.0, it's done. It's finished, it's released. And we've been following this game since like way back in the day when it was just a tech demo. Like years and years and years ago before there was even like a game. All you could do was like call in storms and stuff to kill the little guys that were walking around and they didn't do anything yet like they didn't really build like we've basically played this since like the first AI was put in and there was no buildings and all you could do is put curses on the little guys and whatnot uh, so anyways let's go ahead and start the game on off we're gonna go to the world map and we're gonna build ourselves a city we built this city you know like some magazine said that was one of the worst songs of all time I heartily disagree I disagree. That song bangs hard. Alright. Well, let's go ahead and... I, I would actually... I would encourage anybody that thinks that's the worst song ever made to listen to any song by V Nasty. I, I would like it. It's an open challenge. If you think that's the worst song on Earth, go listen to any song with V Nasty. There you go. That's how it starts out. Uh, we're going to go on survival mode. Sounds good. It's been a little bit since I played the game the last time, but I have dumped a lot of hours into this game, so hopefully I will remember things. Welcome to Rise to Ruins. For your first village, you can select any region that you like. Okay. Well, let's pick our first region then. And we've got the Quiet Forest. We've got the Clearlands. We've got Wyvern Edge up there. That's a pretty cool name for a village. Wyvern Edge. I like it. We've got Coast Bridge. The Enchanted Shoreline. Valencia. Azusa. North Oak. Silver Coast. I actually kind of like Wild Rock. I thought that said something different when I just like flashed over it for a second. My brain filled in letters and I'm not proud of it, but it did. Now let's see here. We got Strong Vale, Arid River. I'll probably go. I like Silver Coast. That sounds pretty cool. Let's do a village on Silver Coast. Yeah, dude. That sounds ultimately rad. So if you never played Rise to Ruins before, it's basically a city defense game. It's got a lot in common with like the old Stronghold games, kind of but no competitive aspect to it. So like really you're building a city and a castle and like a keep around that and then you're building defenses and there's just like a never ending wave of bad guys trying to kill you. And so like you just gotta do your best and hope. Uh, welcome to the first region. The first thing we gotta do is put down our camp. So like we've paused the game, but I wanted to look around for a second and get a feel for this area. Can I slow this down real fast and still pan around? I can't. Okay, well. There's food over here, and food is usually a good thing. There's water over there. We've got an ancient Cullis Gate on that side. There's some old busted buildings right there. I actually kind of think that the place where we should start, there's no crystal over here is the only part that worries me. Well, there's a little, no, those are flowers. Is there any crystal around? We're going to need crystal. We got cactus. Where's the crystal hiding at? Any crystal in this region? So that's actually crystal right there. I thought those were carrots, because I recall the food sort of looking like that. This area might work then. So we've got cactus over here, which is a food. And then we've got enough crystal to kind of go around. It's going to be like, I, I think we should probably settle like right here on the river's edge. Because that gives us lots of equitable building land. And this is going to be really, really easy to partition off and protect us from enemies. Like we've only got to build two walls. Normally with the maps that I play on, you got to build like four sided walls all the way around the city. And right here, all we got to do is, I mean, the trees are a little suspect. Like I think enemies are going to be able to move through the trees right here. So we might not be able to do that in the way that I would like to do that. We also have the option of coming over here. This seems like an okay little spot. How big is the camp? Oh, the camp is kind of large. Okay. Well, then we're going to have to find like a larger space to live in. Like something like this down here, I guess, is probably going to have to do it. We just need like a bigger area, I suppose. And then we'll wall up what we have to wall up. I'm not looking to wallop anything right now, but we'll start out maybe like right here. Looks okay to me, or maybe like right over here. 
Yeah, let's go for it. So there it is. Our first building is down. What you're going to see is little villagers are going to start teleporting in. And they're all going to have little names, and they're all going to have like little histories and skills and levels and stuff like that. But for right now, they've all been assigned to the task of being builders. So they're going to slap together this building right here, which requires six stones and four wood in order to get it done. But until later, we've got some housing over here. I would suggest that we do some makeshift housing. Let's put in a house. And a house so we've got two houses now with the two houses we're also going to need to give some orders to like harvest some wooden things so i'm going to tell them just to kind of murder all of this like all of these trees are super free to die and the faster they die the happier the splatter cat will be they should go and harvest this stuff if there's an open order for it like builders normally don't chop wood as i recall but i think they may harvest the tree so long as they've got a work order that will be fulfilled by the wood from those trees. Yeah, they will. You can see those dots turning green right there. So red are jobs that are inaccessible, yellow are ones that are queued, and green are ones that are actively underway and have had a villager assigned to them. So there it is. We're now chopping away at trees. Just hack, whack, chopping that tree. And we've got a makeshift bow tower right there. I don't know if I'm going to reclaim that. I may actually just, like, destroy it. Yeah, just destroy those. I would like to kind of build this entire area in my own image. And I don't really want to fiddle around too heavily with any of this other stuff. Like, we could reclaim these and turn them into defensive buildings if we wanted to, but I don't know if those are exactly where I want my defensive buildings to be, so... Eh. Uh, we should be pretty safe. We're in the beginning of spring right now. I believe that winter is usually the hardest part of the game. We're going to want to go ahead and get ourselves a little bit of water after we get this done. We don't have any nearby stone, so stone acquisitions are going to be a little difficult. But I will queue this up just in the off chance that I end up queuing up jobs that require stone. That should last us for a little while. The houses are going to be important because people need a place to get in out of, like, the rain and then shelter from, like, the heat of the sun. Stuff like that. They can get heat stroke. They can burn to death. Uh, if it's, like, particularly cold, they can freeze to death. So, like, you really want every single villager in your city to have access to a house. If they don't have access to a house, like, they tend to kind of die on you every now and again. Oh, we can also build a doghouse, but I'm not going to worry about that for right now. Instead, I would like to make a large fountain. Oh, it requires cut stones now. Okay, so we're going to need small fountains then. Sounds good. Uh, we'll put one right there. We'll put one right there so that we have two of them. These will fill up with water, and they can just be used as a reservoir. Uh, we'll get a new thing queued in right here. You see how it says we have zero water right there? That'll get patched up in just a minute once these two jobs are done. This one is going to take a while. How we oh, never mind. We got a bunch of stones from tearing down these buildings. Nice. Good. Sounds good to me. Uh, let's see here. I wanted to disable, I wanted to dismantle this, a makeshift bow tower. But it appears, I don't think I told it to redeem. Yeah, pause the building and then I want to dismantle it, but it's not letting me do it right now. Interesting. It's also not letting me destroy these little fences right here. Oh, I got to click them individually. Gotcha. Well, kind of. I don't know why it's not letting me destroy these. Huh. Odd. I very much would like to destroy those, but... I suppose for now we'll just have to ignore it. This is trash. You definitely want to get rid of the trash. If you don't get rid of the trash, bad things are going to happen. So if there's trash around, like what will end up happening is like mana will get sucked into it. And mana is kind of the mechanism by which this entire game functions. What will end up happening is mana will get sucked into the trash sometimes. And it will create like a trash golem or like slimes. And they'll come around and try to murder you. So my suggestion is always to just sort of like make sure you're kind of passively cleaning up trash just in case. Interesting. It appears like some of this stuff... Yeah, it looks like some of the... Maybe it's because it's not in range in my village. It's saying not in range right now, so it's possible it's outside my range of influence, therefore I'm not able to fiddle with it. And the other things we're going to need 
We got the fountain right there. We need to capitalize on this if you're wondering. It's going to fill up with rainwater. These guys are going to start getting thirsty pretty soon. And if you don't have wells around, they're going to die of thirst. And that's going to suck because you really, really, really don't want to lose manpower this early in the game if you can well and truly help it. Like, you really don't. And the other thing we're probably going to need is we're going to need some kind of, like, trash disposal. So we've got way markers. I don't really need that. We've got harvesting. We've got lighting. We've got walls. We've got trash. There we go. So I would suggest... Provides trasher workers who clean up trash and allows the village to store large quantities of trash in a centralized location. I'm pretty sure this thing, like, upsets the balance, though. So what we want to have is... I don't remember... I don't particularly remember which of these... So some of the... I think it was the processor was the one that you want. So we need a lumber mill for that so that we can make boards. So we've got the lumber mill right there. But first things first is we probably want to end up with... Some kind of... Let's get some storage running, I guess. Actually, we don't need the storage right now. We're good on storage. Let's go with harvesting. And we're going to make a lumber shack. Kind of like over here, I guess. Next to all these trees. I don't know when they're going to get that done. But I figure at some point they'll get it done. And they'll get it all nice and banged out and handled. I do need... You want to watch out for trash. So every time you like build a building. Or every time you like tear something down. Or every time you we need a rain catcher or a water purifier or a well. Okay. I think we can do that. Animal pan, large fountain. We've got the well right there. There we go. We need the rain catch. There. We'll put in the two rain catches. Now, you do have a limit on the amount of buildings you can have in this game. So, for right now, as you can see, it says 8 out of 12. You're going to need to upgrade your civic center, this building right here. If you upgrade it with this little button, it'll actually increase your logistical capacity because it is limited to force you to sort of work on things here and there. I don't know if that'll fill up with water. I may have built the wrong thing. We need the rain catch, like, right now. So, maybe what I'll do is I'll cancel that building so that they'll work on the rain catch. Yeah. Work on the rain catches, please. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I did a dumb. Splatty did a big dumb. You see how the trash is kind of piling up? You don't want that to happen. It gets a little out of control, trust me. I've played this game quite a bit, and trash is actually... You would think it's the roving hordes of undead monsters that are outside the walls of your city that kill you most frequently, but nay. It's actually an inability to deal with the municipal refuse. I know, it's the little things you learn about city planning. I actually don't think I need this second fountain. I was thinking that the fountains were the rain catchers. So let's like have them make some rain catchers and then we'll just have the fountain over there. The fountain is where they drink from. So the wa this right here catches rainwater, and then you'll have a little guy called a water master and what he'll do is he'll walk the water from this over to the fountain so that people can like drink from it. In effect, giving them access to it. Are these guys like hot? What's wrong with these guys right now? Nothing so much right now. I think we'll be okay. Let's speed the game up ever so slightly. Uh, they do give you a warning when you play this game that speeding up the game may cause issues with crashing. I haven't seen it, but since we're in the middle of an episode right now, I'm probably going to try and limit myself and stay away from bumping up to like times 8 speed or whatever. Just to make sure we have an uninterrupted gameplay experience. Yep, you guys just keep doing what it do. I believe in all of my little builders. That's right, little building kinda. Go ahead and grab all the... Ooh, we're almost done. But the rain's ending now. That's unfortunate. Now, don't you know that's the sound of the men working in the rain? Yeah, yeah. Come on, finish that thing off. There you go. I'm proud of you. So now what we need is we need to take a worker off of there and basically have them be a water master. And so the water master will get the water that's falling in here. And as you can see, we're actually ticking up on water now. The water master will take the water from over here. Oh, they're all drinking right now. Gotcha. I was like, our water is dropping off really fast. Apparently, everybody's a wee bit thirsty. And we need to deal with our trash issues now. We need that trash to know its place. Now, my suggestion would be... So we're going to need the refinery first. So we're going to need a lumber mill. I feel as though it's acceptable that the lumber mill go right there. And then we can start converting some wood into boards. That way we can get towards the processor. 
Uh, we can just put in trash cans for right now. I gotta cancel that. Mmm, trash. So for now, what we can do is we can kind of just put in trash cans. And what they'll do is they'll pick up all these little bits of trash. You just need them up and off the ground. And these will act as central receptacles for the trashers who are working over here to get things done. And we don't really have much water left, so we're going to have to pray for rain for right now. We definitely want to gather some food, too. So I think it's probably a good idea in that interest to go ahead and make ourselves some farms, too. It looks like you can't freely harvest food anymore. That or only farms can do that ability, so let's put in, like, a farm or two. Just kind of, like, right there. I think would be a decent enough spot for it. Like, we're going to be working sort of with our backs to the wall for right now because we lack the manpower. In order to get a lot of the jobs done that we need to get done. Yeah, I know. I am aware of what's going wrong. Thank you, game. I appreciate that. Oh, they're still getting like 31 stone for that, though. I think they're going to get kind of hungry soon. Yeah, they're a little tiny bit hungry. They're not as, like, nutty hungry as I expected them to be, but they are a little hungry. A little tiny bit hangry. Where are those guys going? Oh, they're going all the way around? You can't go through that little gap right there? Why can't they go through the little gap? Hmm. That is subpar. I don't like that. So I'm going to need to go and unassign all this. And we're just going to assign this rock right here so that they don't have to go all the way around in order to get access to it. I think it'll be okay. We've got a makeshift marketplace down there. Hey, more rain. There we go. Now we're going to have water for days. Actually, in this game, it's kind of the opposite of what it is in other games. In other games, like, winter is the deadly season. In this game, summer is the deadly season because you run out of water. And so you want to have lots and lots and lots of water receptacles if you can manage it. That's much better. Now they're going after this stone down here. I just, I guess they thought that, like, I guess you can't fit through that gap right there. Sort of an interesting problem that I hadn't really thought about. I don't think about things a lot of the time, though, so that's just life. That's just life. Come along and get your work done. I believe in all of you. Yes, you're all wonderful, beautiful little workers. Work for the king. Work for the king. There you go. Get all that stone up in there. I always like, for some reason, this is like a really, like, deadly, difficult game. But the music is like happy ukulele music. And I don't know why. It just, like, pleases me. Like, it's, I think it's like the, I don't know. It's some kind of, like, dichotomy in between the two sections of the game. That this is, like, a pretty hard city builder. And yet, at the same time, the music is all happy and jovial. And nobody really cares that they're probably about to die horribly. I don't know. It's, it's always one of those things that makes me smile. They'll probably get the trash cans next. I would hope. Uh, we don't have any carpenters right now. We are going to need carpenters to make those boards so that we can make the processor that, like, burns trash. It's going to take a little while for that to be fully effective, but it will be pretty cool once it's done because then we can burn trash. It'll create essence, and in addition, when we burn trash, we'll sometimes get usable stone and usable wood out of the trash. And so, like, I don't know exactly how the system works, but when they go to build something, basically there's, like, a chance that some of the resources will be wasted. Like, they always complete the building, but, like, every construction task produces, like, a random amount of trash that just, like, exists. How much does this hold? It takes four boards, and then it'll hold, like, 16 more trash? Okay. But as you can see, they're cleaning up the trash for right now. That's all that I was worried about. We just needed somebody to clean up the trash. Uh, maintain 10 boards, please. Thank you. Requires a lumber shack? Does it really? I have to have a lumber shack. Why? You can just cut the wood like this. I guess this doesn't give us free floating wood, though. This just gives us, like, random wood, I guess. 
Like, we can't stockpile this. This is wood that's being assigned to a construction. So I guess I see what they're saying. I will, I will accept, I, I will accept the edict of the game. The game is decided, therefore it is true. On the other plus side, our farm's almost done. So pretty soon we'll be able to have delicious food too. Because these guys are starting to look a little hangry. All right, Steven Hurdle, Rayla Targaryen, apparently is super hungry right now. All right. Patrick Jane, the man they call Jane. He's the hero of Canton. You give that man respect. All right, let's go ahead and there we go. So now we got the farmer thing done. Now we can slow the game back down again. We're definitely going to want to have max farmers for right now. And then now that we have farmers, we can actually go and harvest food. Which is good, because I don't relish the idea of starving to death. Like, I don't know where you're at on that entire concept, but I know where I'm at. And where I'm at, I definitely don't want to die, so there you go. Uh, they've cleaned up most of the trash around the village. Mostly. How much do each of these carry? Like, 24 maybe? What's the capacity? Oh, they can carry different types of trash, so they carry, like, actually, like, 100 trash. Just of different types. There's like foodie trash, stony trash, woody trash. Gotcha. Well, know your place, trash. I assume the woody and stony slots are going to fill up pretty quickly. What is that right there? Gold ore? Dude, there's gold in them, our hills? Damn. Okay. I mean, it looks like he's making planks to me. Regardless of what the game is saying, it looks to me as though he's making planks, even though it says it requires a lumber shack. So, like, you know. So, we've got food inside of there. What they're going to do is they're going to take this food. They're going to plant it inside of here. And as they plant it, it will, like, grow and occasionally give us, like, infusions of food. But most importantly, it allows me to just rough harvest off the land. And then, whenever we need more resources, I can just use my Motivate Land spell. That's right, the king has magic, in case you were wondering. I can use my Motivate Land spell in order to just grow the food back whenever we need it. That's what I've done the entire time I've played this game. I don't think I've ever relied on farming for the principal bulk of my food source. I almost always just use magic to grow more food. <laughs> That's what I spend most of my mana on. Uh, our mana will go up as we get more people. And so the more people we have in the village, the longer this meter will get, and we'll be able to cast more spells. Stuff like making meteors rain down from the sky on our enemies. We can summon golems. We can do, like, a massive heal that heals everybody in the village. It can be helpful if you get one of those surprise situations where the enemy breaks through and is, like, all up inside of your business. I think everybody is idle right now. So for the moment, we can probably consider building some more stuff. Uh, we can upgrade these buildings right here pretty easily. Uh, we can make it either high quality, which makes them much happier, or makes them regenerate faster, or we can make it standard housing, or we can make it like slums, where it's just like people crammed in head to toe. I usually just go with the standard housing. That's usually what I do. And this is how you get around using up your entire build queue, is by upgrading the buildings you already have. Good, you guys collect that trash over there. What is that? It's that's not grass, that's a crystal. Okay. We're gonna need to harvest some crystals and stuff too, but that's kind of a that's kind of a later game objective. We don't need to worry about that like right this minute. Oh yeah, the monsters are here. It should just be a trickle. It shouldn't be bad. Uh, if you've got a lot of trash laying around the village, then yeah, you're gonna have a lot of monsters, because every time nighttime comes, like slimes are gonna spawn out of the trash. You're gonna have issues. But we actually got all the trash cleaned up nice and early. So I think we'll be okay. We don't have any warriors or any fighters or anything, although I would love for you not to do what you're doing right now. Like, I don't want her to go way off to the edges of the village. If she can help it. We're night mining right now. It sounds like a heavy metal song. Night mine! I don't know. It sounds vaguely like a heavy metal song. Or like maybe an album, like an album name. Like, the front of the album would have, like, a bunch of dwarves being all buff and heavy metal, like, smacking the walls while monsters are attacking them and they're fighting with, like, laser pistols. I'm telling you, man, it's the next album by Camelot, Nightmine. I wouldn't put it past them. That's all I'm saying. You guys throw some stones on there. I believe in all of you. 
We may not even get attacked on our first night, in all honesty. There's wild roos out there. Like, what's a wild roo? Oh, it's a rat. That's right. Roo is French for rat, isn't it? Isn't it? I think it is. I don't know, though. I don't speak French. Like, it's rata in Spanish, but, like, that's kind of easy. I vaguely remember roux being the word for rat in French, but I don't know. Maybe one of my my well, maybe one of my my French-speaking viewers can fill us in on that one, because it's possible that I am woefully, am woefully undereducated because I don't know French. I don't know French. My Spanish is okay and passable. My French, not so much. Not so much. I I'm in trouble if I ever have to speak French. I'm about to pick it up fast. Oh, there's a monster in the village. A headless. They should attack him. Yeah, I was going to say, every now and again, one of these dudes will get brave and they'll, like, attack this guy. And every time they attack, the little meter above their head will fill up. When the meter above their head fills up, they do a limit break that explodes the whole map. No, it's a lie. They just level up. I, I was trying to make the video more interesting, okay? It's not my f Are you guys going to fight this dude? I do expect you guys to fight this guy, by the way. Yeah, there you go. Also, the bad guys in this game can level up. So, like, if you get attacked by a headless, he can actually level up, too, while in the midst of combat. In case you were wondering how that all works. I would like it if you guys would beat him to death. I know you have nary but your hands right now to defend thyself with. But defend thyself, thy must. There you go. This has a bunch of blood and essence and other stuff in the... On the ground. If we had a collector, we could actually suck up all this essence and it would add it to our mana bar. But we don't. So. Welcome to the way life works. Welcome to the way life works. After upgrading these two buildings, we should have everybody in our population living inside of the village. So that'll be cool. We won't see any more enemies around aside from like the big... Dude, that rat has a lot of HP. Why does that rat have so much HP? It's crazy. He's got like 600 HP. I don't know if that rat's been going to the gym, or like what he's been doing. He's taking a lot of creatine. Like that's a beefy rat right there. I don't know what to do about that guy. Oh, they're eating my farm right now. It's kind of somewhat unfortunate. Hmm. I can't assign them to attack. They just kind of fight when they want to fight. So my thought was, like, maybe when the farmers come back, they will fight. But there's really not a lot of promises in that regard. There you go. Protect your farm, dude. No, the turnips are not important right now. Protect your farm. Well, they killed that one over there, so that's good. At least people are kind of, like, leveling up and stuff. It's nice. It's helpful. Eventually, someone will come down here to repair this, and hopefully they will fight with the enemy once they get there. This zombie appears to be moving on. Apparently, it's no fun to tear down residential structures if there's no one around to witness. Oh, never mind. That's a third zombie. That is a third zombie. There's a third zombie. They are coming for us. I'm a little bit concerned about how they got into the village. I don't know if they were able to cross the water. Apparently she's a giant coward. So she's not really fighting back. Even though she could probably win. Hmm. Yeah, they're crossing the water. That's really bad. I thought they couldn't cross water. Hmm. That's going to lead to some interesting things in the next couple episodes. Yeah. The bigger issue is that these zombies are leveling up off this building right here. I'm going to have all the workers come down and see if we can finish them off now. Huh. 
Come on, fight. That's right, put some knuckles on him. I actually don't want you to, like, tear that down. There you go. Build it back up. Yup. Put a little bit of leaven on it. It needs it. There you Are you guys tearing it down right now? You guys are tearing it down right now, aren't you? Yeah, the big red X right there kind of gave it away. It's okay. It's not a hard building to rebuild. But it is a little bit of a bummer. At least we've got food laying around for when they get hungry again. That did produce a lot of trash, though. Yeah. So they buffed the first night. The first night didn't used to be this bad. Usually on the first night, you didn't even get attacked. Now you get hit pretty hard on the first night. So they've changed the difficulty around in between versions. Like, normally the first night is super quiet. And you maybe have, like, one slime... This time around, we're getting, like, flooded with bad guys. Like, they're all over the place. So I guess we'll have to see to the defense, although this is not defensible. I wouldn't have built on this map if I had known enemies could cross water. And so apparently they can just cross the water and just not care. Which makes this a bit more precarious, in all honesty. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to over... I'm not exactly sure how we're going to overcome that. You guys leveling up and, like, getting better at your jobs? Good. That's what I like to see. You're all like level four or whatever? Nice. We'll keep beating him to death. Like, we shouldn't have to worry too much about our villagers' HP. They don't actually die that easy. Unless they get really, really overwhelmed. Oh, there's no available rock. Did they chop down that entire wall over there? Oh, they did. No, they didn't. What's happening here? Oh, that needs cut stone. Oh, I didn't know that needed cut stone. Well, we don't have the villagers for that yet, so we're going to have to wait for that to come on in. But my name is Splattercat. This is Rise to Ruins. It's in 1.0 right now, and it is a really, really fun game. Uh, it gets pretty big and sprawling. By the time you get into it, you'll have defenses everywhere, just firing laser cannons at everything that gets in your way. And then you can leave this map and go to a different map, and this city will just, like, run itself while you play a different map, and you get unlocks. It's got all kinds of things going on. So if you wanted to get the game for yourself, it's out now. Look down below in the description. I'll have a link for you. If you don't know who I am or what I do, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie gaming every single day so that you don't have to. How you doing? Take care, everybody. I'll see you all next time with something hot and fresh.